If you give yourself up, I'll see that you get a fair trial. If you don't, I'll be forced to use this gun, and you'll be a long time dead. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Come in. Mr. Paladin? Hello, hey boy. Oh, look like you're all ready for trouble. Yes, I'm leaving right now. You go on most interesting job? No, no. This is just a routine business matter. I have to see a man in Mexico, then deliver some papers to Tucson, Arizona. No, I'm going to take it easy, relax, maybe look in on some old friends down that way. Oh, I bring these shirts my cousin Lee Sing wash and iron for you. Thanks, hey boy. Oh, did you tell your cousin about the starch and the cuffs? Oh, yes, sir. Good, let's see. Oh, hey, boy, there's more starch than ever in these cuffs. Oh, you saw me, Mr. Paladin. But I thought you said you told him. Oh, yes, sir, but uh, it's the opinion of my cousin Lee Singh that most essential for cuffs is plenty starch. But but what about my opinion? My cousin Lee Singh, very obstinate man. <laughs> yes, but hey, One boy... One might uh, say Lee Singh cussed mulish and of extreme stubborn nature. All right. All right, hey, boy, I guess I get the idea. Just put the shirts in the drawer, please. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, off to Mexico, eh? Uh-huh. On my way. Well, adios. What's that? Adios. <laughs> adios, hey boy. Dandruff bothers most men. Most women, too. So listen. Today, you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes, with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. Only 59 cents. When my business in Mexico was completed, I crossed the border into Arizona, my destination, Tombstone. I rode easy through the pleasant roll of the hills and valleys of the somber Dragoon Mountains and finally into Bedlam. I expected to find activity, but nothing like this. Tombstone was swarming with men, swaggering and boisterous men in groups and men alone, lolling in the sun, sleeping off drunks, Along the walks, the wagons and horses were lined up solid, and it was almost impossible to guide my way through the moving crowds in the street, but eventually, I reached the Alhambra Saloon Bar and a glass of cold beer. Oh, Paladin. What? Hey. <laughs> what do you know? Clay, Clay, how are you? I was planning to look you up. Oh, it's been a long time. It sure has. Hey, you've got a busy town here, Sheriff. Awful, ain't it? Been this way for a week. More coming in every day. What's going on? New strike up on Mule Mountain. Uh Uh-huh. You planning to stay a while, Paladin? No, I'm afraid not. I had business across the border. I'm headed now for Tucson. Too bad. I could use you. Expecting trouble? Oh, just the usual. When you get this many men on the loose... Now, wait a minute. You heard me. Are you accusing me? Just go on. Sounds like there might be a little trouble brewing at that poker table over there. Talking to me like that. You wait here. Go on, play. All right, boys. What's the trouble? I ain't taking a guff from no smart aleck weasel eyed Texan. You watch it, mister. You're gonna get more than guff. Now hold it, fellas. You ain't dry behind the ears yet. You giving me that big talk? Talk? I'll show you. I don't nobody move. You hear me? 
Nobody. I'm getting out of here. I don't think so. But, uh, That's my gun you backed into. You should know you can't cover a crowd like this with one six-shooter. Now drop it. If you shoot, mister, I'll squeeze this trigger going down. Somebody else will get it, too. Drop it. No, I... <laughs> Oh, thank you, Paladin. I'm afraid I brought that gun butt down on him pretty hard. Yeah, he's out cold. He's scared. And I figure a scared man is a dangerous one. What? The clay your shoulder, one of his slugs get you? No, this ain't nothing. But Jim Aikens there needs a doctor real bad. One of you men get the doc, will you? Tell him to hurry. Frank, you and Bob, you get this kid across the street to the jail. Tell Sam to lock him up. You better see the doc yourself, Clay. Looks to me like that shoulder's torn pretty bad. Oh, I'm gonna be a lot of good in this town, ain't I? Keeping law and order with my gun arm out of commission? Paladin, I'd be much obliged if you could see your way clear to do me a favor. What's that, Clay? Well, I know you have to get to Tucson, but will you let me pin a badge on you for as long as you're here? You really do need help, don't you, Clay? Sure beginning to look like it. Well... All right. Thanks. As soon as I get patched up, we'll go over and swear you in. Jim Aikens had a lot of friends in town. If he dies, there's apt to be real trouble. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, X-Lax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolate at X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently. Overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? My first official act as a deputy sheriff of Cochise County was to register the prisoner. His name was Whitey Hale. He was from Texas. He was 20 years old, and he was scared. My second official act was to settle back in Clay's chair, prop my feet on his desk, and wait for something to happen. It did. Not exactly what I expected. I saw her first through the window, her tinted red hair piled high, bearing down on the office at a full trot. Rosie Dugan, pharaoh dealer at the Crystal Palace and one of my favorite women. All 200 pounds of her. Yeah. Paladin. Rosie! Oh, well, Paladin, Rosie... Paladin, honey. Well, when did you get in town? Long time no see. How are you, Rosie? What are you doing behind that desk wearing that star? Where's the sheriff? He's at the doctor's office. He'll be back. Sit down, Rosie. Yeah. You know something, dearie? One of these days, I'm going to get myself dolled up and come out there to Frisco to see you. Are you? you and me are going to yeah. rip that town wide open. Yeah. How about that, huh? That's the date, Rosie. <laughs> what do you want with the sheriff? Well, you got a guy locked up in your clink here named Whitey Hale. Yeah? What do you want with him? I got his wife over to my place. His wife? Yeah, I've been out of town a couple of weeks. I just got back on the stage. This kid was riding with me. Come all the way from Texas, she did. Nice little thing, pretty, but awful skinny. Well, I saw she wasn't feeling too good, and then by the time we got here, she was real sick. I mean, serious sick. So I took her to my place. Huh. Another stray kitten, huh, Rosie? Uh, <laughs> Did Hale know she was coming? No, poor little kid. She was figuring how she was going to surprise him. I tried to get the doc for her, but seems he's busy. I hear how Jim Aikens got himself shot. Yeah. Well, she keeps asking for this husband of hers, so... How about the guy? Can I bail him out, huh? I'm afraid not, Rosie. What do you mean? What's the charge? Maybe murder. Murder? No. Hey, wait. This Whitey Hale, this ain't the one that shot Jim Akins. 
Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Hey, have you seen the crowd gathered out in front of Doc's place? Yeah. Doc's working hard to try to keep Aikens alive. Yeah, but if he don't make it, that there crowd ain't gonna say too bad, amen, and go home. No, sir. When a crowd like that starts getting itself worked up to lynch a man, no. Well, they won't take him. Well, what am I gonna tell that little girl? Rosie, don't tell her anything. Hmm. Aikens isn't dead yet. Oh, that's good. Uh-oh. Don't be too sure. Look out the window. Here comes the sheriff. Yeah. He doesn't look too happy, does he? Clay? Aikens died. Doc did all he could. Oh, that's too bad. Well, hello, Rosie. That crowd, did they know? Doc's going to keep it quiet as long as he can. But they'll find out. You're really worried, then? Paladin, I told you Aikens had a lot of friends. Well, I'll bet in that crowd gathered out there, half the men never knew Aikens. A third of them never even heard of him. They joined up with that mob just for fun. The strangers in town, huh? That's what scares me. My own people I might be able to handle. You don't think we could stand them off? No, I don't. And they're really working themselves up. I know the signs. I won't have a lynching. I worked too hard to establish respect for the law in this town. Can I do anything to help, Clay? Well, uh, I was thinking, Paladin. Maybe you ought to get on with your trip to Tucson. What do you mean? I'd like to authorize you to transport the prisoner to the marshal there. To hold until this town simmers down. I see. Sure would help me. But it's a mighty big responsibility. All right, Clay. I'll do it. Thanks. I appreciate that. Now we'll have to make plans and move real careful. Yeah, you know, you got to figure your time, just how long it's going to take that mob to drink up the courage it needs. Mm -hmm. Rosie, why don't you poke around the saloons? All right. You keep your ears open. Let us know how the talk's going. Sure. Well, Paladin, I guess there ain't much we can do about that poor little girl right now, huh? I'm afraid not, Rosie. Oh, it's a stinking shame. Just a dirty, stinking shame. Well, uh, I'll see you men later. Goodbye, Rosie. Yeah, bye, Rosie. Well, Paladin, guess you might as well let the prisoner know what's going on. Yeah, I guess so. I'll get a wire ready to send to the marshal's office. All right. Whitey. Yes, sir? Aikens died. Oh. I didn't aim to kill him. He was golden. You there. shot him. He was unarmed. That's murder. No, I didn't I'm taking to... you to Tucson. Why? What do you mean? You might as well know. Feeling seems to be running a little high in town. You saying they're fixing to take me? They won't do it, Whitey. We won't give them a chance. You know something? I, I've been sitting here in this old cell thinking about how my old man, he was all the time telling me I weren't no good. Born to hang, he used to say. Well, there's a chance your old man was right. But if you hang, it's going to be through due process of law. And now, here's a message from the watchmakers of Switzerland. Swiss vacation, holy hello, Swiss vacation. Win a fabulous vacation for two in beautiful Switzerland. Enter the Swiss vacation contest. It's easy, nothing to buy. Pick up a free entry blank at a jewelry store or other store that sells quality watches. Then in 25 words or less, complete this statement. A quality watch is the best value because... There are 1,000 prizes. 
First prize, a 21-day vacation for two in Switzerland. You fly deluxe Swiss Air both ways. Visit many colorful places. All expenses paid for two people, plus $500 extra spending money. Second, third, and fourth prizes. 15-day Swiss vacations for two. Also, four mink stoles. Eight Bolex movie cameras and projectors. Twelve Hermes typewriters. One hundred sixty hundred dollar watches. Eight hundred and twelve gala assortments of Tobler Swiss chocolates. Enter the Swiss vacation contest today. Free entry blanks at your jewelry store. The sheriff got horses and gear ready for us and hid them in a draw beyond the far edge of town. Whitey and I walked along a back trail to reach them, down a bluff and through a mile and a half stretch of brushy desert. The going was slow, and we were silent most of the way. Yeah. Now, this is a long way around, but we had to do it. Mr. Paladin, what are they going to do to me in Tucson? They'll hold you for trial. Will they hang me? Well, that's up to the courts to decide. I right, hold up. There's the wash. The horses ought to be waiting for us in those willows over there off the trail. We'll be... Hey, wait. Listen. That's a team and wagon. Yeah, it's heading right down the road where the horses are hidden. Stay back. Huh. There's Rosie. Come on. Paladin. Rosie. What is it? You gotta come with me. What are you talking about? We have to get away from here as fast as possible. Whitey? Yes, ma'am? I'm sorry there ain't time to break this to you, gentle. But your wife's to my place, and, and she needs to see you. Emily? She's in Texas. She's sick. No, no, she's in Tombstone, but she's sick all right. Paladin, the doc come in to see this little kid. She, she ain't gonna... She ain't gonna live through the night. Emily? You talking about my Emily? Of course, she don't know about Whitey's trouble here. She keeps asking for him. I figure she ought to see him. Rosie, Hale's a prisoner. He's also that little gal's husband. No, but this is official business. The minute we left that jail, it became my responsibility to see that he gets to the authorities in Tucson. Oh, come on, Paladin. You got your responsibilities as a human being, too. I gotta see Emily. She can't die. She's the only one ever in my life thought good about me. Look, Buster, I don't give a hoot nor a holler about you, neither. It's that little gal I'm thinking about. Come on now, climb in the wagon, you two. We'll go to my place the back way. Nobody will know about this. Rosie, we can't Paladin! do... Paladin! <sighs> climb in the wagon, Whitey. When we got to Rosie's little house on the edge of town, she took Whitey Hale into his wife. Then we waited in the front room. After a long while, Whitey came out of the bedroom. How is she, Whitey? Even is dead. Oh, that's a shame. I'm real sorry to hear that, Whitey. Paladin. His gun was in Emily's things. I gave it to her when we were back in Texas. You'll have to give me that gun. You're still my prisoner. No. I ain't going to Tucson with you, Paladin. Give me the gun, Whitey. Now, don't come towards me. I don't want to kill you, but it wouldn't make much difference now. I'm leaving this town. Oh, don't do this, Whitey. You won't get very far. You'll see. Now, just stand right where you are. I'm going out the back door. You try to follow me, I'll kill you. Oh, Whitey, don't. I gotta. Don't try to stop me. Whitey, stop. Stay here, Rosie. Whitey. I told you, Paladin. <laughs> Whitey, why did you do this? I guess it's best this way. Paladin, Emily and me ought to be together. Could you see to that? Yes, Whitey. I, I showed him, didn't I? Pa always said I was born to hang. I guess I should. Yes, Whitey. 
I guess you did. Good morning. Hello, Miss Wong. Oh, I say you come back last night. Did you have most relaxing trip this time? Well, well, no, it didn't quite work out that way. Oh, it's too bad. But it's most wonderful having you back at Carlton Hotel. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Wong. Your room all clean now. Oh, uh, Miss Wong, fine soiled shirts. Uh, make into bundle. Leave in closet. Oh, yes. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Oh, Miss Wong. Is there anyone you could recommend to do up these shirts for me? Oh, yes, uh, oh? my cousin, Lee Sing. Your cousin? My cousin. Well, I thought Lee Sing was Hey Boy's cousin. Oh, Lee Sing, everybody's cousin. <laughs> I and see. Lee Sing, very nice, but he... He is a man with a mind of his own? Oh, he's... Uh, you know Lee Sing? I think I'm beginning to. Uh, Miss Wong, I know yet you're awfully busy, but do you suppose you could find time to do up those shirts for oh, me? Oh, uh, yes. I'd be most happy to. Well, fine. Fine. Now, look, Miss Wong, about the cuffs. I don't like starch. Oh, Mr. Paladin, most essential for cuffs is plenty starch. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes, Miss Wong. I suppose you're quite right. Oh, quite right. <laughs> If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try Camels. More people smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Any filter, any king, any regular. The Camel blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor and easygoing mildness. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel! Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Bartlett Robinson, Harry Bartell, Joseph Cranston, and Betty Gard. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>